We're all artists. We're all painting our picture. Painting our picture of who we are and of the world. Painting our picture of who we think we are and what we think the world is. We start doing this as soon as we start learning to think. As, to, as soon as we start being educated. The nature of our brush strokes is determined by our own psychological tendencies. And what we paint is determined by our culture, the environment. So we could make that distinction. And as we go through life, we change bits here and there, again, dependent on our own nature. Perhaps we don't change it very much, just the occasional detail. Perhaps we have trouble changing vital chunks of it. We can spend a lot of our time painting over and repainting. The Lord continues to instruct Arjuna. This indeed is a great wonder. First there appears the picture and then there arises fragmentation. We're like the physicist, we're like the scientist. We keep homing in on details. The picture exists only in the mind. Yes, where is this picture coming from? Where is this whole creative process coming from? This process of picturing ourselves and the world. Whatever is done is done by emptiness in emptiness. It's emptiness painting emptiness space. The translators put space in parentheses here next to emptiness. Again, I would say that space is being used as analogous with awareness. Emptiness dissolves in emptiness. I suppose it's death that's being referred to there. Emptiness enjoys emptiness. Emptiness pervades emptiness. Whatever appears to be is pervaded by vasanas, psychological conditioning or mental image. These are all the tendencies to create. The world appearance is illusory. It exists in Brahman as an image exists in a mirror, intangible and without holes, breaks and divisions, being non-different from Brahman. The world appearance is often described as nothing more than a reflection in consciousness, but there's nothing being reflected. This is the point. It's like the mirror being non-different from its own reflections. And these reflections aren't coming from anywhere. It's more like a television set. Nothing's being reflected in the television set. So if we can imagine the mirror with things being reflected in it, but there's actually nothing being reflected in it. There's only the mirror and its reflections and the mirror is non-different from its reflections. So this is emptiness in emptiness. It exists in Brahman as an image exists in a mirror, intangible and without holes, breaks and divisions, being non-different from Brahman. It's the one awareness. It's the same awareness in you as it is in me, as it is in all living things and all non-sentient things. It's the, one, it's the one awareness expressing itself in infinite variety. So we have these creative tendencies which incline us to paint a particular picture and to want to stick to that picture, make everything fit that picture. Even what is known as Vasana is essentially based on the infinite consciousness and non-different from it. 
I usually describe these fasteners as the cognitive process, but it's the, the creative impulse. It's the impulse to create a picture. And if you have ever actually created something, then there's a tendency for it to become the focus of your being. Whether you've created something artistic, or whether it's a work project, or whether it's even your own child or family, you tend to identify with it. It becomes your world. You get very attached to it. He who is not free from the bonds of Vasana is firmly bound to its illusion. Even if one is left with just a trace of this Vasana or mental conditioning, it will soon grow into a mighty forest of samsara, world appearance or cycle of birth and death. But if through constant endeavour this seed or Vasana is burnt by the fire of correct understanding and self-knowledge, then that burnt seed will not give rise to further bondage. One whose vasanas are thus burnt does not get lost in pain and pleasure. He lives in this world as a lotus leaf in water. The water just trickles off. So we need to stand back from our creation, stand back from our creativity, stand back from our art, from what we're identifying with. It was said before to turn the desires back on themselves. First we really have to look at this longing, this tendency to create and to identify with. Isolate it. Isolate the creative principle and turn its tendencies back on itself. This is how these fasteners get burnt or simply trickle off like water.